Exercise 15D scheduling problems. Just to recap from exercise 15C, it's just worth to rem uh, remember that one activity on an activity network cannot be completed or even started until its two predecessors have been done or two or three or four, however many predecessors it has. The se second thing to remember is that any dummy activities have got a weight of zero, nada, nothing. So when we're finding the total amount of time a project should be taking, those things need to be reminded of. So uh, the other thing we also need to be aware of is a thing called a critical path. A critical path is the path from the start of the project to the end of the project that takes the longest time. The reason it's called a critical path is because all the other activities are entirely dependent on the slowest activities. For example, we can't skip ahead to the end until the slow activities that take forever get uh, uh, done. So that's what a critical path is all about. Let's have a look at example one. Example one. In this network, each activity has been has two boxes de uh, designated to it. In fact, actually, it's been designated quite more, except for there's one. There's one activity that's only got two boxes. The rest have got four. Are the numbers on the left the earliest starting time, EST, or the latest starting time for the activity? So, you... Given logic, what on earth does an earliest starting time mean and a latest starting time? Well, the earliest starting time just from English grammar would suggest when is the earliest that particular activity can be done. If I want to say, let's go and do this project now, uh, now, uh, which uh, that's what it would seem to be. Whereas later starting time seems to me, if I was sitting around just spinning on my chair going, Oh, I suppose I can do my activity, but I don't want the boss to know. I don't want to delay the whole project. That's what a later starting time would sound like to me. So let's have a look at these numbers. Start with A, and A has this peculiar set of boxes here. It says for A is zero, for B is zero. There's A up here. Let's get my little highlighter going, shall we? Um, Yeah. For A is zero, for B is zero, and then it ends to for C is three, for D is three. So what on earth does that mean? Well, I would suggest that if that has a zero there, that would imply that it's this is the time that I would be starting the activity now because it takes three, has this got hours? Let's assume it's hours, uh, three hours to get activity A actually done. And so we can see if for C and for D, if I want to start D, if I want to start C, I'd have to be at least, it has to take at least three hours for that activity A to be done. Uh, if I, and so I would suggest strongly that the numbers on the left, all the blue numbers, apologies for my colorblind audience there, will be the earliest starting time. Because it seems to imply, like if I look through D, the earliest starting time seems to be 3 plus 20 is 23. Might be a little bit more complicated than that, but th this is what I think it would mean. So it's the earliest starting time would be the numbers on the left. These numbers on the left are found by a process called forward scanning. So in the boxes labeled for E and for F, they both have an 8. But what does the 8 signify? Well, it might help if we look at what some what the predecessors for E and F are. What are the predecessors for E and F? The predecessors that come before it is C and B. So how long does it take to get project B done? Well, it takes four. It takes four uh, hours. I'll just keep it as hours whilst we remember it. And it says here, activity five, it takes five hours to be done, but none of those are equal to eight. Well, hang on, let's look at predecessors to those. Are there any predecessors to B? No, it can get started as soon as it likes. But for C, there is also a predecessor with A. So I know that the earliest starting time that C can get off the ground is three hours into the project. That's what this number here is. So three plus five must mean eight. 
In other words, the number that I put in here has to be the largest of the two predecessors. So let's put the the largest of the two predecessors. So for E, to, in order to get E started or F started, it must be eight hours into the project because remember that we cannot start an activity until all the predecessors have been done. We cannot start E until A or until C and B have been uh, completed and C can only be completed when A has been completed. So then what we need to do is when Link can move on a little bit further. Have a look at this vertex here, which says 4G and 4H. So to get to this vertex, I can go via D, which would be 20 plus three is 23, or eight plus seven, which is 15. So we could actually get to this activity uh, in 15 hours time, but we're gonna have to wait until big old D, well, there's 20 hours, come on, oh, come, come on fellas, let me, get, let me get this job done, until that gets done. So therefore it has to be 23 hours, because that's this, uh, that we are dependent entirely on its, uh, the largest of its predecessors. Because what's the predecessors to H and G? The predecessors to H and G are D and E. And D is the larger predecessor, because we have A and then D, so that will be 23. So hopefully we can now see that what these numbers on the left signify. So they signify the earliest time they are the earliest time that the activity can start given that its predecessors are completed. So when it gets to this, where we look at H for I and for M, the minimum time there says 40, um, because it's 20, there's only one way we can get to I and to M, which is 40, uh, because it's 23 plus 17, uh, which is 40, not 30, as I had originally counted, it is 40. And if I look at uh, activity F here, so activity F, uh, to get that completed, it takes only one hour here, so eight plus one. So here, these two numbers, you'll notice they're all the same number. I can either do, to get to here, I can either come from F, and that would be eight plus one, which is nine, or from the other vertex, from D slash E, it would be 23 plus three. And of course we pick, it's always dependent on the slowest activity. And the slowest activity of course is being held up at this juncture here. So that's why those numbers have to be 26. That box there, which definitely said 43 that whole time, it certainly wasn't another number that I had to then pause the video and change. Uh, it says 43. Because what's the uh, Earl, what's the, what is it dependent on? Well, it's the previous activity there you can see is uh, up here, 40, 40 plus three is 43. That is a bigger number than 26 plus three, which would be 29. So therefore we are dependent entirely on the slowest activity, which is 43. Which leads us to the finish here. So the finish here says 46. Um, and so it's either 40 plus five, which is 45, 43 plus three is 46, or 26 plus 11, which is 37. And we are, therefore, the slowest time is 46. So the minimum time it takes is 46 hours to complete the entire project. And we found that by doing forward scanning. So forward scanning was just a process of finding what was the earliest starting time for each activity. And those times are entirely dependent upon how slow its predecessors are. And when we've got a junction, we choose the predecessor that takes the longest, for that is what the activity is dependent upon. C, the numbers that will go on the right-hand side, or red boxes, are found by backwards scanning. Are the numbers on the right EST or LST? Well, given that the numbers on the left are the earliest starting times, we can probably eliminate to suggest that the ones on the right would be the latest starting times. So you'll notice there that at the finish, the, we've got this 46 here. 
That is because in, in order to model this accurately, we want to make sure that the latest finishing time for a project is the same as its earliest finishing time, which is 46. And don't get too confused by the fact that I say finishing time, starting time, whatever. I'm just saying that the project, the quickest we can get this project done is 46 hours. So if that's the case, we want to make sure that we're not going to spend any more time than that. If we do, then all of this scheduling is for nothing. So therefore, whenever you do finish your, the amount of time it takes, we always suggest that the latest time we can finish it is the same time. So now what we're going to do is find the latest starting time for each one of these. So what this means is that we can find out if, for instance, one activity takes forever, we might not want that and one of the activities takes quicker is much quicker, we might not want to start it immediately because otherwise there's a lot of chair spinning. If someone can sleep in for the day and then just do two hours of work whilst we're waiting for that D activity to get done, why not? So when I do backward scanning, one thing I do because I, I find visually I get drained is I do with a little red mark, a little red pen, is I put the opposite arrows so I know where I'm backwards going. Backwards going? That's, a, that's not a phrase. Where I need to go when I'm backtracking. There we go. That's a little bit better grammatically. So, we've got the, we start with 46. And then what we'll do is we'll go, we can see if we go back through L, the latest starting time for this is going to be 46, take away three, which is 43. The latest starting time, if I'm going for a via M here, so 46 take away 5 is 41. And then if we're going via I, 43 take away 3 is 40. So you'll notice there that just as an example, this activity, uh, for if I want to go and finish activity M, I've got the, the earliest time I can start it is 40. But because the whole project will finish in 46 hours and that only takes 45, or that only takes five hours, I've got an hour up my sleeve. I can go and get a donut, go for lunch or whatever the case might be. And then I can get that five hours done. I can work five hours. So that's what a later starting time is. Now we look at J. So if I wanted to go via K, uh, 46 take away 11. Hopefully I'll get my numbers right here. That should be 35. And via J, it would be 43 take away 3, which is equal to 40. Which means that if I want to get activity J done, I can just hang around until hour 40 of the project and then get that done. Now, for these two, up at J and H, we have to do a little extra step compared to what we've done before. So, for activity H, we can see here. So that's going backwards. We actually have two choices because we could actually do the top number, that 40 here, and take away 17, or we have the bottom number to choose from, 41, take away 17. And the number we should always pick would be the small, the, the least, the smallest number. So, so via H, we had the choice of either doing 40 take away 17, gets me 23, or 41 take away 17 equals 24. Well, we, and we choose the smallest number. So why do we choose the smallest number? Well, in that, remember what I was saying about delays. So the latest starting time means this is the time I can start it without delaying the project. It's not the earliest time, but if I had some slack time up my sleeve, uh, when can I get this started? Now, if I went with 41, take away 17, 24, that means actually I'd end up stuffing up the project because I need, I can only, so uh, with, if I wanted to get the activity for, from uh, I started, for instance, if I don't start it at hour 23, that would delay activity I and so on, and that would stuff up the entire project. So that's why we choose the smallest numbers. If that's a bit confusing, remember that the blue numbers, we pick the biggest number. For the red numbers, we pick the smallest. 
For activity G, G we have a choice here of 40 and 35. So we can do 40 take away three or 35 take away three. We should choose the smallest number in this case, and that's going to be 32. For activity E, uh, so of, uh, from this point here, if we're going back from activity E, we pick the smallest number here. So in this case, this will be 23 take away seven, and that's going to get me equal to 16. And from K, uh, for this one, or for F, then we, uh, which has got the uh, project time of one, to fill in this box, we either do 40 take away one, or 35 take away one, 35 is smaller, so 35 take away one will get me 34. So for this box down here, so 4D, uh, we're going in reverse, so we either have the choice of doing 32 take away 20 or 23 take away 20. We should always pick the smallest number. So it'll be 23 tw take away 20, which would be three. For C, we choose either 16 take away five or 34 take away five. We should always go with the smallest number. So that's going to be 11. And then for the A here, uh, we can see for activity A, we will do three, we we'll pick the smallest number. So three take away three, which is zero. And for activity B, that means we'll do 16 take away four, because 16 is smaller than 34. 16 take away four, and that's gonna get me equaling two. As a reminder what the critical path is, as we established before, it's the longest one. So the it's the one that this entirely this entire activity project uh, is dependent on, and I can tell you, it is this here. So how did I get though? How did I get that as my critical path? Well, these are the ones that are the slowest out of all of the different paths uh, and all the different ways to get to there. Also, they add up to forty six if that helps. Um, but one of the things that is also worthwhile is just to look at, they're the only ones where we get the same starting, latest, earliest starting times and the, sorry, the earliest starting times and the latest starting times. And that is your clue to be able to identify where the, uh, the critical path is. The critical path should be passing through all the vertices where we've got an earlier starting time and later starting time being the same number.